Hello Impact Loungers, it's me Adam, back for another interview tonight on the Impact Lounge. Uh, you haven't heard from me or Ro in a while, uh, we've been taking a bit of a sabbatical but I'm delighted to say I'm back tonight with these short interviews that I sometimes do. Now if this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, make sure that you do hit the subscribe button where each and every week you'll get our Impact review from our very own Trent and Kyle who do a fantastic job there. Very soon you should be seeing uh, either myself or myself and Ro coming back for our weekly news show as well. Okay, we're just taking a breather for the time being. So in a minute I'm going to uh, be joined by All Ego Ethan Page. So see you in a second. Hello, welcome back, and uh, I'm now delighted to say I'm joined by Ethan. Good evening, Ethan, and good morning to you, afternoon, as we we already established. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is take two, listeners. This is take two. Uh, yeah, once again, uh, after my fantastically spectacular fail when I, I didn't, I failed to record an interview with Jordine Grace, I have actually hit the record this time, Ethan, so you'll be glad to know it is working. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, how, how, how the devil are you, by the way? Oh, I'm great. <laughs> Great. So yeah. So uh, by the way, uh, loving the the vlogs that you've been doing. So oh, I thank think we're you gonna, very much. We're going to touch on that as we go through it. But uh, what kind of prompt did you to do that? My wife actually. Uh, she brought it up. Uh, I used it used to be something that I did, um, and then she thought it would be a great idea to capture as much of this year as I could to sh- kind of show our daughter when she got older. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, for for anyone who hasn't already seen it. Uh, how do we find you on YouTube? How do they find it? Uh, you just got to head over to YouTube and search Ethan Page Vlog, and it'll be the first account that actually shows up. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, I was watching your last one there where you went to Vegas. Uh, who are those other wrestlers who, who you were with there who were uh, very, very good at uh, not winning money? <laughs> uh, that was uh, Shane Saber. He's a Canadian wrestler. And uh, Cody Lane, uh, I believe he's from Texas, but he's living in St. Louis right now, so... Uh, he, they both of them actually wrestle for my promotion in my hometown, Alpha One. So there we go. We're going to come on to Alpha One in a little while, but uh, before we do that, one of the things I noticed on one of your or one of your uh, vlogs uh, was your toy collection. Well, I say toy collection, your collectibles. Uh, I think uh, most people would beat me to death or anyone who collects these things if I called them toys. So, uh, do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Because that that was fascinating. I take it you're a big comic book fan and, and the like. Yeah, uh, big time, especially when it comes to superheroes and, and uh, the, those kind of characters and comic books and stuff like that. But uh, you can call them toys. That's uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, only I'm, toys I'm, if you play with them. They're only toys yeah. if you play with them. Well, I mean, technically, I play with them. Uh, I do like figure photography, and plus, you have to play with them to set them up in the room, and yeah, you're, you know, fidgeting with them. Don't let these um, overprotective collectors change your views on nerds like us uh, there's nothing wrong with being a nerd in fact yeah. uh, I, went to, uh, I went i i noticed you posted about it it makes me seem like a stalker that i've been doing my research this doesn't sound like me at all by the way doing research on people I talk to. <laughs> but 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 uh i did notice that you also went to see captain marvel last week as i did and uh you, you said it was one of your favorites uh yeah, it, my, it, kids, it my kids loved it yeah i and like you know as a father of a daughter i was just excited to see somebody that uh my daughter could instantly look up to um when it comes to superheroes and not even just that but the fact that they're saying that she is and the way that they kind of told the story in the movie that she's the strongest hero in the entire mcu and i thought wow that's amazing yeah well yeah, it, it was absolutely brilliantly told as well. So I'm really oh, yeah. quite looking forward to Endgame now. So we're, we're going to move along from the superhero stuff, but there are a few more questions I've got to ask you because let's face it, not only me, you, but there's a lot of nerds who do listen to this podcast as well. So I'm sure they'll want to know about this stuff. But but what's uh, well, first of all, your collectibles. What's what's the crowning piece in your collection? Um, I would say it was this uh, Venom statue that my wife got me. It kind of sparked my entire collection uh and even got me in to the mood of trying to find things uh specific to what i wanted to fill this room with so i would say that statue if not um just my entire marvel legends collection i have most of them that have been released uh in box in very good condition so and i'm continuing to collect those and hunt them down so i would say those are definitely up there 
Okay, so two very quick questions on, on superhero Marvel films then. So what, what's your favorite Marvel film and why is it Thor Ragnarok? <laughs> Thor Ragnarok is definitely up there, <laughs> but I would say my number one is a Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Okay, uh, fair enough. Cool soundtrack as well, that one. Yeah, very. Um, so fi- final superhero question, and th- this is going to determine how the rest of this interview goes. It really is. Uh, but who's the best Batman? Uh, Michael Keaton. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll allow that. I will allow <laughs> that. I mean, uh, you're going to say it, Christian Bale? No, I was going to say I was going to say Adam West, of course, but that, that, oh. that shows more about my age than anything. Uh, no, as long as you, as long as you didn't say uh, Val Kilmer or um, George Clooney, we were okay. Actually, yeah, it, it, it could have gone very easily. I, I, no, I actually my... like Ben. So, yeah, I, I thought he was very good, but you're right. Michael Keaton um, played it very well, although he didn't have very big shoulders. I don't know why that bothers me. It just does. Anyway, <laughs> uh... that's so funny. <laughs> okay, that's a real thing. Yeah, well, apparently so. Um, yeah, but it's funny because it has it has a special place in my heart that movie. Because uh, as a kid, you know, blockbuster. It was a blockbuster for me. That was when back in the day when you queued up around the block to see the film, and that was um, I think one of the last films I did see that was a genuine, you know, round the block to see it at uh, at the cinema. So uh, there you go. Multiplexes and streaming have spoiled it all, haven't they? You, Kids don't know how good they've got it these days, and they can just not queue up and just go and get their tickets. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the old man rant out of the way. Um, and anyway, so yeah, so back to your vlog. Um, fake name, no gimmicks. So that pretty much sums up what you're doing at the moment, isn't it? Although I suppose you could call all ego a gimmick. So tell us about the thoughts behind your character at the moment, and and how you how you're wrestling. Uh, well, it kind of just, because being an independent wrestler, it kind of varies everywhere I go. I mean, some places I'll be a good guy, some places I'll be a bad guy. It's just up to where, what the writing's like. And on Impact, I don't really have a strong enough character to pick other than just, I'm a bad guy and I beat people up as best as I can. Um, but I think with time, as my character kind of develops an Impact, I'll be able to actually put, I guess, an identity to it. Okay, well, we're going to touch more on the impact bit, uh, and that's where we're going to concentrate on. But uh, I've got to ask, because this is almost like your second run, even though the first one never really much happened. But it is your second run with the company, if we count uh, the Chandler Park stuff. Um, So can you give us a a bit of background as as to pine that, and where do you think that was going? And and I'm guessing it, it, it finished because you had your daughter and you took time off is, is that right or no actually it finished because of legal issues uh not being able to get a work visa in time uh oh, that was right. actually the o- the only real the only real threat um and and reason that they didn't bring me out was to get me across the border um and then once all that actually got processed and put through uh it was kind of so long that they needed a wrestler uh instead of a character so I filled that spot instead and ended up with Matt Seidel. And are you quite relieved, do you think? Um, yes, because then at least now I am myself uh, fully, and it makes it a lot easier to move forward. Uh, and it's kind of done and out of the way. Fair enough. And just remind me, when you did come in as, as Chandler uh, originally, was that uh, during... Um, Dixie time or was it Jeff time? I can't. Cry. It was around then, wasn't it? I, I can't think, remember exactly. I when. think Jeff, but slowly turning into Scott Demar. Okay, so so obviously Scott's Canadian, so good relationship there. But um, how did the kind of call come to come and bring you back? Was it Scott himself who approached you? Yeah, I've I've been uh, luckily fortunate enough to be able to deal with Scott for. Um, I would say 90% of any dealings with Impact, and uh, I have no complaints. Uh, it's great communication, which is very important to me. Great. Well, you obviously came back in with uh, Matt Seidel, and you know, as you said, you've been running with uh, less of a character gimmick uh, than, than you were previously. Going forward, have you tried to throw in your input into the creative process? Are you trying to change that? Do you, do you think you'll stick with the character you've got for some time being? Uh, yeah, I'm always up for tossing ideas around, and uh, they're always up for listening. So uh, as best as I can, I always try and pitch something. Uh, obviously, people that have been watching me from um, previous to Impact Wrestling know that I like to talk, so 
I was, that's always a big pitch for me is more time to show my character and my ability to speak. And obviously it's been a little bit more limited since you've, since you've come back. Um, are you quite keen to get involved in one of the major storylines? I mean, what, what does the future hold at the moment? Do you think for, for Ethan on uh, impact? I mean, uh, we have tapings coming up this weekend and time will tell. Uh, not really much I can discuss. <laughs> No, but, I understand. Uh, it, it, we, we don't it, want to do it, any spoilers is, here. We don't. Understand. No, no, no. It is a very exciting time um, for me, and I'm very excited to uh, head over to Windsor and get these tapings going because it's some good stuff coming up for Ethan Page and Impact. Excellent. Well, we're certainly looking forward to that. And and one of the things which I'm guessing you've teased yourself on uh, on Twitter is uh, the inclusion of well, Josh Alexander being signed by the company. Yeah, I'm 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 just excited that he's there in general. So that's a big thing for me, uh, and I know it's a big thing for him career wise as well as uh, potentially teaming. I uh, can keep my fingers crossed on that one, and hope for the best. And did you have a, any kind of input into that into bringing him in? Uh, I mean, I've touted Josh's name uh, forever, so I would hope I had a little bit of, uh, of help in, in making that happen as fast as possible. Now, one, one of the co-hosts of the show, um, uh, Trent, who, who hosts our weekly review show, he, he's got uh, quite a history with AAW, which so have you. Um, you were, were you a former heavyweight champion there, actually? Yeah, yep, yeah. and tag um, champ, yep. Yeah. And you beat Josh, actually, as well, didn't you? Um, yeah. Thinking about it. So he really wanted to know the question, does, does Chicago hold any special place in your heart, bearing in mind you've won a couple of titles there? Oh, and for sure. Any... For sure. And, and and I've worked so close to Chicago. Like right now, I'm the current uh, Black Label Pro uh, heavyweight champion, and that's like 40 minutes outside of Chicago, uh, as well as uh, freelance wrestling. I've been chasing their heavyweight title uh for a while now and that that company has been doing great things for me currently so yeah it's chicago will always uh have a huge place in my heart especially even all in like to add to the history of chicago it's just yeah it's very special to me good and is there any anywhere else other than obviously in canada anywhere else that you haven't wrestled that you'd like to i mean have you been over to the uk much uh, yeah, I actually cross over for the UK uh, many times in the last couple of years for Southside Wrestling, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to work in a lot of fun towns and uh, with some of the best wrestlers in the UK. So, uh, and I'll be heading back there in the middle of the year, which I'm excited about. Okay, so that's fairly soon. All right, we'll keep an eye out for you on that one. Okay, so so moving into, um, I was going to say a bit more about your career and those kind of things who has been the biggest influence on your career so with regards to the best piece of advice you've been given and those kind of things um that's tough because i'm like a a situational person so like every situation presents a different piece of advice or something to learn from um and in canada i was the worst when it came to actually doing things properly, going to like a school to train properly and learn properly. So I don't actually have a trainer. Uh, I'm kind of more, <laughs> mostly self-taught, but I learn a lot from my mistakes. <laughs> we could say. If we could uh, judge a person by how many mistakes they make and how much they learn, I would be one of the most experienced people in the world. Yeah. And I'm not just talking <laughs> wrestling. So uh, <laughs> it doesn't show in the ring is all I can say. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I, I say this a lot too because it's very true. But uh, like I didn't really start breaking out in wrestling until I was maybe six or seven years in. So by that point, fans are seeing a more polished version of myself. Whereas wrestlers that come from America or even the UK, uh, or no, sorry, not the UK. I'm saying just in America, but uh they're already getting exposure so young in their careers whereas uh people like myself or uk wrestlers are trying to become so good in their own country that they get brought out to america and uh i think i was lucky enough to be held back that long so yeah <laughs> good, stuff, good stuff all right well i, I appreciate that uh, you're giving up a lot of your time today so we're, we're going to have a quick a few quick fire questions at you um, just to finish off today. So obviously you've been doing a few of the uh, the Impact press 
uh, journalist, you know, interviews this last week. What's been the stupidest question you've been asked? And it might have been for me. I'll take it on the chin if it is. Oh, man, that's a great question. Uh, honestly, the interviews have been kind of good because it's just more recent, like, talking about what's going on currently. And I'm totally cool with that. Uh, I hate when interviews are, what's your dream match? How did you start in wrestling? Uh, those are those are the stupidest questions you can ask because they've been asked a million times. Excuse me a second. I just got to cross out the, the next few. Um, <laughs> I'm already joking. I would never dare ask that. Please don't listen to any of my interviews. No, no. Gen- generally, I, I I I don't usually ask those questions. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. One of the things I noticed on uh, that you, you did, did start posting about. I think uh, haven't you had uh, quite a bit of weight loss this year? And that was something that you were recording on your on your vlog. Is that right? Or yeah. Did um, I uh, dream that up? No, no, no. You didn't dream it up. I um, I've been trying to bust my hump to uh, bust my hump and get rid of it. <laughs> I, I I want to shed some pounds and really show that nothing can hold me back. And uh, I think that that was really the only thing that separated myself from the top talent in pro wrestling. And now it can't be something that can be held against me. So on that note, do you find yourself moving around the ring better? Do you, have you seen a real benefit or? Oh yeah. Not yet no, no, no. It, it, for sure. Like my cardio is much better. Uh, I feel better. I'm in way less pain. I sleep better. There, there, there's like incredible benefits to it that, um, have really motivated me to continue to do what I have been doing so that I can keep improving and, and feeling better with time. Okay, so as I said, last few questions and then I'll let you get on with your afternoon. But uh, with regards to the career aspirations, obviously you're with Impact and feel free to tell us the contract. Are you, are you with them for a long time, I'm guessing? Uh, it was announced that I've got uh, two years left. So, or not two, not two years left. That sounds so negative. Two years to go and uh i'm looking forward to it and i can't can't wait to spend the next two years with impact and uh josh announcing that he signed a three-year deal means that he'll be with me for the remainder of my contract so knowing that i think at least in the next two years we should be able to team and that makes me happy good good well final question for me and i I alluded to it at the beginning of the uh, interview today that i forgot to hit the record on the Jordine interview that we did. But uh, she, she revealed that, well, she's written three books about um, guys who approach her on uh, Twitter and social media. So uh, as a celebrity in the wrestling world, do you get uh, that quite a lot as well? And have you got any amusing stories that you can share? Because Killer Cross told us he could write some really dark, erotic fiction based on what he's been sent. <laughs> yeah, like I've been sent, like, if you, uh, I'll do a little plug here. There was an interview I did with um, Jordan actually on my High Spot show, and I asked her pretty much the same kind of question, and it led to me opening my DMs and reading some weird fan fiction uh, of this dude doing terrible things to my body and <laughs> describing it. So I, I've dealt with some pretty nasty, weird stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I think you should keep that one away from your daughter on the vlog. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's no, interesting no, no. to see that it, it does seem that uh, everyone is getting this. I, I should got into the wrong career of, of instead of doing uh, these interviews, I should have been busting my hump in in, in the ring myself uh, to get this this weird stuff. But yeah, no, you don't want it. Anyway, well, you plugged that interview. Hopefully, when you go on to your next one uh, and people say to you, what's the weirdest question you've had? You could talk about uh, Michael Keaton's shoulders anyway. Hopefully, if nothing else, you remember that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, good luck with the recordings. Can't wait to see what these tapings come uh, bring for us. Hopefully, we'll get to see you a bit more on the screen um, and, uh, and a bit more of a storyline. And uh, really looking forward to see what happens next for you. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll catch up again soon. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. See you, man.